Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem set for this generation? Question mark. Uh, scripture reference is out of Zechariah 12, verse 2, part A. Behold, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup that causes reeling to all the peoples around. So the date has been set. Uh, the United States is scheduled to move its uh, embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And, of course, uh, the news broke via Twitter, as most things seem to be breaking here lately. And it's uh, from Israel Katz. I would like to congratulate Donald Trump, President of the United States, on his decision to transfer the U.S. Embassy to our capital on Israel's 70th Independence Day. There's no greater gift than that. The most just and correct move. Thanks, friend. So the date's been set. The United States will move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem on Israel's 70th Independence Day. And that date on our Gregorian calendar is May 14, 2018. So we're about three months away, loosely. Um, I'm going to take you guys to uh, trumanlibrary.org. And I, I used it, used this just so I'm not accused of twisting facts and wanting to make things fit or whatever. But it is what it is. You guys need to do your own homework. Um, see what, you, what conclusions you come to. And this is going to be 70 years to the date. President Harry Truman of the United States announced the rebirth of Israel. And we're going to go to May 14. 1948, um, right up here, late morning, Eastern Standard Time, late afternoon in Palestine, David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, reads a declaration of independence, which proclaims the existence of a Jewish state called Israel beginning on May 15, 1948 at 12 p.m., or I'm sorry, at 12 midnight, Palestine time, 6 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, May 14, here in the United States. So 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that'd be midnight Palestine. British mandate for Palestine expires and the state of Israel becomes into being. Uh, 11 minutes later, the United States recognizes Israel on a de facto basis. The White House, which would have been President Truman, issues the following statement. This government has been informed that a Jewish state has been proclaimed in Palestine and recognition, recognition has been requested by the provisional government thereof. The United States recognizes the provisional government as the de facto authority of the state of Israel. Um, the United States representative, representative to the UN, Warren Austin, leaves his office at the UN and goes home. Secretary of State Marshall sends a State Department official to the United Nations to prevent the entire United States delegation from resigning. So it was controversial then. It's controversial now. A day later, you know, the Arab states attacked Israel. So, but again, the point is, it's 70 years to the date. And that's the focus of this, is the time point. 70 years. Uh, the following is um, from... Uh, Jerusalem Post, jpost.com, U.S. confirms Jerusalem Embassy opening in May. And this is a quote from the U.S. State Department. We're planning to open the new U.S. Embassy to Israel in Jerusalem in May. The embassy opening will coincide with Israel's 70th anniversary. The embassy will be initially located in Arnona on a compound that currently houses the consular operations of the Consulate General Jerusalem. At least initially, it will consist of the ambassador and a small team. And again, that's per the U.S. State Department, which that's down here. Uh, this right here is uh, where the Temple on the Mount, the Gold Dome sits, the Western Walls right here. And this is just south of here, maybe little more than a mile, so it's not that far away. And that's where they're looking at locating this. And this Arnona is a district in Jerusalem. Um, so that's where they're looking to put the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. If you don't think they're serious about this, this is Sheldon Adelson. And he is the CEO of Las Vegas Sands. And he's willing to privately pay for the, for the embassy move. He's willing to foot the bill, do it all. 
and the cost is estimated to be about $500 million or one half billion dollars. Adelson is a supporter of the Republican Party, and he's also backed both President Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel in the past. Now, their relationship's been on again, off again, a little frosty at times. But the bottom line is this guy's willing to put up some serious cash to make this happen. Now, of course, the Palestinians, they're not happy about this. And the Palestinians refer to Israeli independence as Nakba Day. And this word, Nakba, is the Arabic word for catastrophe. They acknowledge Nakba Day, the day after Israel's declaration on May 15. And this was initiated on Israel's 50th Independence Day by Yasser Arafat. As we know, he's dead since. Now, the day is typically celebrated with conflict and skirmishes against the Israeli Defense Forces. And with this announcement, the United States looking to make the move on Nakba Day, as they see it, uh, they have responded, of course, in anger and rage. Violence has broke, broken out uh, in Gaza and the West Bank. And this is Saeb Arakat, senior Palestinian negotiator, made the following statements. Determination to violate international law, destroy the two-state solution and provoke the feelings of the Palestinian people as well as of all Arabs, Muslims, and Christians around the globe. Trump and his team have disqualified the U.S. from being part of the solution between the Israelis and Palestinians. Rather, the world now sees that they are part of the problem. Um, Hamas official Sami Abu Zuri He's quoted as saying, moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem is a declaration of war against the Arab and Muslim nation, and the U.S. administration must reconsider its move. And again, this is from the Jerusalem Post. All these things were pulled from the Jerusalem Post. Palestinians angry at decision to move U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem in May. So, okay, they're upset, and they're ready to declare war. Um now, the thing that gets really interesting with this from, um, from a biblical perspective is some would argue, including yours truly here, the time span covered in this post is a biblical generation. So from the time that Israel was declared a nation officially, which will be May 14, 1948, to the movement of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem is 70 years. And I'm going to quote Psalm 90, verse 10, the years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble, they are soon gone and we fly away. And so I'm going to ask the question, are we entering a prophetic window of time? Now, the the following context is the Olivet Discourse and the end of time scenario Jesus made this comment in Matthew 24, verses 33 through 34. See also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass until all these things take place. So, you know, if if this is that generation, that window of time opens here in about three months. And so it's ultimately your personal business, but I highly recommend getting right with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And I'm going to close with a couple of verses. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And the last one is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and this is from the Apostle Paul. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand by this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you've believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So search your heart. Think about it. This is about to get serious. Appreciate you guys uh, listening. Please feel free to check out paulthepoke.com. Thanks for following. Take care. Bye.